When it comes to filmmaking, you can forget sometimes that when you're about to make any type of film, whether it has a large or small budget, or if it's a short or a long film, you always need to get yourself prepared to be ready. Similar to like getting ready for a new job, where you're working with entirely new people. And because of this, you need some specific requirements. However, you may ask, what exactly do I need in the first place? Well, join me, Miguel Whittle, as I explain the requirements of pre-production. Firstly, which is one of the most important parts in any film, is the screenplay. Either all you'll really need is a computer slash laptop to type it up and then print it, or you can just write it with some paper, though the former is a better option as the director can edit it by writing over the script during editing. When it comes to films usually seen as some of the greatest and all-time classics, one of the biggest praises will be the writing. This is very common in mysteries and thrillers, such as Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, for how they keep the audience guessing, and they still don't see the twists coming or comedies such as Edgar Wright's Hot Fuzz for the clever wit and how funny the characters are and the situations they throw themselves into. The main function of a script is that it helps to tell us what the story is, the personality of the characters, and do it through all no visuals so the writer needs to have a great imagination and let the director and the rest of the cast and crew be it to be able to imagine easily what is going to happen in the film. Whilst there will be tweaks and even whole scenes may be edited, added or deleted at any time, sometimes even in post-production, for the most part your script should be ready to shoot by the time the director first calls action. As you can see, a script has a great impact in how the actors perform as they will become more and more confident in their roles as a fully made script helps them to be able to learn lines much more quickly and easily, along with working much better with other actors as they can quickly plan scenes out as each of them will know each other's lines and the way they need to deliver them, um, such as through the right emotions, each, for example, happy, angry or worried. The process I have described contributes to the success of the project in the following ways it gives the actors more confidence in their roles as no change with the script means they can understand the characters they are playing and the director being able to have a clearer vision of the film as the characters emotions, the setting and time are all being told so the director now knows fully how each scene will look along with the storyboard artists also knowing each scene much better than ever before. And speaking of storyboard artists, eventually, once you have provided a decent script for your film, it is then time for the director to help present his own interpretation of how the film should look with storyboards and shot lists. You can easily buy a sketchbook that contains this. Storyboards are important to a film because it helps to plan how the scene will play out according to the vision of the director and explaining mainly to the camera crew how the scene will be shot for little to no mistakes at all to occur. This will be used after you have a script that has been fully edited and approved by all cast and crew members. Whilst the director explains the storyboards, the storyboard is done by the storyboard artists who are hired to help bring the story to life. Eventually, when the results are fully done, the film has fully come alive in a way that the entire crew can see and gives them a concrete vision to strive for. As you can see, this process contributes to the success of the project in the following way that the camera crew will know what each shot will be and the angle of it. However, for the passion of, the of this film to be truly shown, you need the right amount of money, which is where the budget comes in. Even in independent films, you will still need some type of budget so that your film is successful to the studio that distributes your film, as the amount that you are given is also what needs to be given back by the audience who paid to see your film, or it will flop and the studio will also try not to get bankrupt if the film has a massive budget. However, 
That is only the most important part. Whilst these other reasons are not as important, they are still big parts into why you need a budget in the first place. The budget's main purpose is to get you to be able to get the right equipment that makes a standard film, such as a professional camera, a boom mic, and a tripod, just to name a few. The process I have described contributes to the success of the project in the following ways that it allows the crew to be able to get the right equipment needed to make any film. The director not fully knowing how the film will look, if the film will look cheap as most of the budget will be spent on filming equipment, or if it will look it has a, 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 has a decent budget as all the filmmaking as all of the filmmaking had been bought before the as all the filmmaking equipment had been bought before the film was being made. It also contributes to the success of the project by having the, the equipment you have bought to be able to use in future projects. However, with the purchase of equipment, you need to make sure it's consistent. Before you spend any of the money you've been given or have been saved up by yourself, you need to plan what you are exactly purchasing, along with how much you are exactly spending. Thanks to online shopping, it has become much easier than ever to purchase a camera, despite the price probably still being high. However, if you are doing a film in the style of found footage, then you can use your phone, or any cast or crew member's iPhone, without using any of the money from the budget you have. As well as equipment, you will also need to be able to afford to use the locations needed, so you will need to balance the amount of money you spend. Eventually, when you have done making your first film, do not throw away any of the basic and important equipment used to help make any film possible, so that it can be used for future projects. So, as you can see, the impact your first film has, whether you are satisfied or not with it, is that you still have equipment which you have spent lots of money on to be used in the future. The process I have described contributes to the success of the project in the following ways that the film won't constantly change camera so that it doesn't become distracting to the viewer. It helps you to be able to know on how much you are spending on the budget you have been given much better because you have planned what you are buying and how expensive it will be and the crew will know what equipment each member will be using and what type it will be. With the locations you have chosen you will need to then have a risk assessment on your location to make sure your film is done safely and that no cast or crew member are harmed during filming or when a scene is being prepared. This will impact the film by, by making even those made by students look professional as everything will look more competently shot and the acting will also be the same kind of quality as having them not being harmed at all will give them confidence in performing more difficult scenes both physically and mentally. The best format to tell other cast and crew members that the risks will, that will be faced on set is through photography to show fully where and what e each risk is. On the other hand, other great formats is you could write notes and send to the cast and crew or create a social media group to message the risks or send photos of them. I also advise that your location should not be very risky as you should keep track of your budget with both how much you have already spent on equipment and how much money you still have left so that if you do have still a lot of money that could still replace any broken equipment. Actors and other crew members however are much more important in not harming as an accident could cost you most of the rest of your budget having to be used to pay for the hospital and family members of the ones that have been injured. The process I've described contributes to the success of the project in the following ways by having the cast and crew become more aware of their surroundings, little to no injuries occurring and the film looking more professional as the cast will have no worries of getting injured so they can focus much more easily on just practicing on acting as their characters whilst the crew can easily film scenes without tripping. And last, but certainly not least, you need to find the right cast and crew members. If you still are a student, then you can get your fellow classmates as crew members to help get you the equipment they possibly have. And one way you can all work really well 
is that if you all have been given the same task, you could all help to make an anthology series, which means that you will have less arguments about each other's ideas. As for actors, you could ask a friend of yours who are actors or students doing acting and performing arts. However, if you do not have any friends who do not, have, who do, not do any of them, you can always tell your teacher who will go around the college to help find those who do them and are interested in helping. There is clearly the biggest, this is clearly the biggest impact as it is required to include actors to help star in your film and for more than just you to be able to work behind the camera as that would be too stressful. The process I have described contributes to the success of the project in the following ways with the right chosen actors helping to make the film become truly alive with their performances helping to carry the film as they are the people that the viewers can see along with the right crew pe along with the right crew perhaps maybe helping you on advice for the best equipment and help you with working with other people so to get you prepared for when working with many different people in filmmaking in the future so if you follow all these steps together you can fully understand what it is required for a solid pre-production foundation and can take this advice for more than just one future project. Thanks for watching, and I wish you all the best.